the 1990s, an aviation project was launched called the Joint Strike Fighter Project. It was tasked to find a new military aircraft that could replace a wind range of existing aircraft in service with countries such as the United Kingdom and United States, with a new strike fighter. Aircraft that were subject to replacement by this aircraft including the British Harrier GR-7 and GR-9, and the USF-16. Boeing and Lockheed were the ones that undertook the competition with their X-32 and X-35 aircraft. Ultimately, the Lockheed X-35 would win, and it would become the F-35 Lightning II, one of the most advanced aircraft ever made for military service. Boeing's X-32 would not go beyond the prototype stage, with just two examples built. Despite its cancellation, many wonder if the rather ungainly-looking aircraft was actually the better of the two. It was a much simpler aircraft in its design, and would have cost less. The kicker was that what Boeing showed off was not the aircraft in its final form, whereas Lockheed produced a prototype very close to the final F-35. Had Boeing got the go-ahead though, things might have been different. The first flight of the Boeing X-32 took place on September 18, 2000, and like the X-35 it was a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Unlike the X-35 though, it had more conventional lifting nozzles, similar to that of the Harrier in which it might replace. The X-32 had a unique design, built around a large, one-piece carbon fiber composite delta wing, although the final iteration of the aircraft would have been more conventional regarding the wing. It had quite a large chin-mounted air intake at the front, a consequence of the X-32's direct lift system. Powering the X-32 was a single Pratt & Whitney YF-119 PW 614 afterburning turbofan. And unlike the X-35, the X-32 did not need a complex fan system in order for it to undertake its VTOL capabilities. The first prototype, the X-32A, was solely designed for conventional takeoff and landing as well as aircraft carrier trials. The X-32B meanwhile was the version that could undertake short and vertical takeoffs and landings. Initial flight testing would show some promise, with an F-18 chase pilot remarking how he needed a lot of afterburner to keep up with the X-32 during the initial stages of its first flight. The X-32 was soon undertaking various flight tests, and things were promising. The X-32B would soon show that it was able to undertake vertical takeoffs and landing, and the afterburner was not needed during those stages. A butterfly valve would direct the core stream exhaust gases to a pair of thrust vectoring nozzles, located close to the center of gravity of the aircraft. Ahead of those, a jet screen nozzle provided a sheet of cool bypass air to minimize the circulation of hot gas. A pair of ducts led to roll nozzles in the wing tips of the jet, and thrust vectoring then allowed the jet to rise or lower vertically. Also like the Harrier, the aircraft would transition from vertical to conventional flight via the nozzles, with a clever system to maintain a fixed total nozzle effective area. In simple terms, the whole engine of the X-32 was a lift engine, whereas the X-35 needed the complex lift fan, powered by the main engine. In terms of the handling, test pilot Philip Rowdy Yates would praise the X-32, saying he would gladly take the aircraft to an aircraft carrier, such was its smooth handling and precision. Why the X-32 lost out to the X-35-F-35 is down to a whole host of reasons, which Yates explained while speaking to former F-14 Rio Ward Carroll on YouTube. The fact that Boeing crews had to modify the aircraft for it top operate in stable mode whereas that wasn't needed for the X-35 was one factor, although production X-32s would not be like that. But there was also the fact that the X-32 was not the final design for Boeing's product. The final F-32, pictured above, would have been a lot more conventional looking, with a less happy looking air intake at the front, and horizontal stabilators that were not on the prototype aircraft. Annoyingly for Boeing, the X-35 already looked like a fighter jet in final form, and like a mini F-22 Raptor. 
because it was. Plus, as Boeing had not demonstrated their final design, it could not quite meet all the JSF requirements. But irritatingly, the F-32 production version would have. Boeing hit back on that, saying that this was a warplane, not a prom queen. Or words to that effect. Had the Boeing one though, Yates, and others, believes that Boeing had a more robust manufacturing capability for its jet. He also believes that the final design would have easily met all of the JSF program's requirements. Ultimately though, had Boeing simply produced the final design for the F-32 in the first place, the JSF program could have had a different winner, and we might have been talking about how Lockheed lost out with the X-35. Both X-32 prototypes are now preserved, and are often remarked as the happiest aircraft in the world. With that front intake, we can see why.